Roast chicken is my all-time favorite dinner, and I make it at least once a week. And this recipe is the recipe I use. Now, I developed this recipe called pollo a la maton, or chicken under a brick, nearly 15 years ago, and I like it because this skin gets super crisp. All right, so the key to getting super crisp skin is we're gonna butterfly it or spatchcock it if you wanna sound fancy. So here I have a chicken. Now to do this recipe, you need a chicken on the smaller side, three to three and a half pounds. If it gets much larger than that, it won't fit in the skillet so well because we are cooking this in a skillet. All right, so here we have a little chicken. I'm gonna tuck the wings back behind the body. That just keeps them out of the way so that all the surface area can get good and brown. All right, patting it dry. Throw this in the laundry. Now to butterfly chicken, you're gonna flip it upside down and here's the backbone. And this is why you wanna have a nice sharp pair of poultry shears. You're gonna go up one side of the backbone and these poultry shears, you can hear them, they just go right through the bones with no work. And this one up the top can be a little tough, but these things go right through. I like to flip it around, so I'm always cutting away from myself. I'll go right down the other side. Now we're gonna flip the chicken over, and now you gotta give it a little CPR. You're gonna press on the breastbone to flatten it. And then, when that's good and done, I'm gonna take some plastic wrap, we're actually gonna take it a step further and pound it flat. Really make sure that the bones in there are nice and flattened. That way you ensure all the skin makes contact with the skillet and that's how you get it good and crisp. Now I'm just gonna season it with a little salt and pepper. You really don't wanna add any other seasonings at this point because those seasonings will burn in the skillet. All right, and you can also season the backside. Never hurts. This chicken is ready for the skillet. I'm just gonna wash my hands. Here I have a 12 inch non-stick skillet, has just a little bit of vegetable oil in it and it's been heating up over medium high heat. You wanna get this skillet ripping hot so it really makes a good crisp skin. And I mean, the oil is just beginning to smoke. Yep, seeing wisps of smoke. So now it's time to get the chicken into the pan. I'm just gonna pick the chicken up with tongs, lay it skin side down in the pan. That's a good sizzle. Now this is where the brick or the a la maton comes in. What I'd use instead is a nice heavy Dutch oven. I've learned over the years to wrap the bottom of the Dutch oven in foil just to help keep it clean. All right, so this weight is then gonna press the chicken skin into that hot skillet and it gets a beautiful golden. So we're gonna cook it like this for 20 to 25 minutes, checking every five minutes and adjusting the heat as necessary to make sure that it's getting brown but not scorching. Well, that chicken is browning. It's time to make a little bit of a marinade. Now, a lot of the recipes I found marinated the chicken before they started cooking, but I found that that didn't work so well because the marinade really had a tendency to burn. Instead, we're gonna add it part way through. And for the marinade, keeping it really simple, we just have some olive oil. To this, we're gonna add a little bit of garlic, about three cloves. You can mince it by hand, but I love using a garlic press, especially if it's a fast midweek dinner and I don't even peel it. I just cut the root end off, and then I put it in cut side down, and I let it all squeeze out. Next, I'm gonna add a little bit of fresh thyme, about a teaspoon and a half, and if you don't have fresh herbs, it's okay. You can use dried herbs here. It'll taste just as good. But if you use dried herbs, you wanna use a lot less, maybe more of about half a teaspoon, three quarters of a teaspoon. I'm just pulling the leaves off the stems. If the stems are really delicate and they break, that just means you can chop them up and it's gonna be as delicate as an herb. Um, into the oil it goes. I'm gonna add a little bit of lemon juice. This is two tablespoons of lemon juice. Just a few red pepper flakes for a little kick. You can add more if you like. Last but not least, a little pepper and a little salt. That's it for this simple marinade. And now, <laughs> the best part about this recipe is it's a twofer because when we put the chicken in the oven, it gives us an opportunity to put some potatoes in the pan so they get good and schmaltzy. So these are some red bliss potatoes, about a pound and a half. And if they're bigger, it's okay. Just cut them into smaller pieces. You want them to measure about three quarters of an inch so that they'll cook at the same rate as the chicken. I like to just slice them in half so you can lay a few of them cut side down in the skillet and they get good and crisp and brown. So I'm gonna finish cutting these up and then we can check the chicken. 
This chicken has been cooking under this weight for a little over 20 minutes, and I've been checking it every five minutes or so to make sure it's good and brown, but not scorching. And at this point, the skin is gorgeous, but it's very delicate. So you wanna treat it gently because you want that skin to stay intact. So I like using two pairs of tongs. Oh, that is why I love this recipe. It's fast, but also it's the only way to get a mahogany crisp skin on a whole chicken. So now it's time to get those potatoes into the skillet. First off, I'm gonna drain off this excess oil. Plenty more schmaltz is gonna come out of that chicken in the oven for those potatoes. All right. Do you like that back flip? Do you see that? I learned that in the test kitchen. It's a really nice way to prevent the drip from going to the bottom side of the skillet. It falls back in the skillet. And it looks cool. All right, so into the skillet go the potatoes. We're gonna add a little bit of fresh thyme, about a teaspoon and a half, some salt and some pepper. All right. I like to put some of them cut side down. This is being a little fussy. You definitely don't have to do that. But when they're cut side down, that cut side gets so beautifully crisp. It's almost like a potato chip. I usually take time to do that to some of them until I run out of patience because this is a midweek dinner after all. That's a good amount. All right, so the chicken goes back on top of those potatoes. Oh, and last but not least, now's when we're gonna add that marinade. By brushing it over the top and then it goes into the oven with the skin side up, that skin stays good and crisp. I found a lot of recipes that cook it skin side down in the oven, but with the skin on the bottom, all the juices just made it soggy. By having it skin side up, the hot air of the oven makes sure that it stays good and brown and crisp. Oh, and it drips down onto those potatoes. Oh, stop. So good. All right. So this is gonna go into a very hot oven, 450 degrees on the bottom rack. That bottom rack is just gonna help those potatoes cook through. And the chicken only needs another 10 to 15 minutes to cook through. We're looking for the internal temperature of the breast meat to be about 160. It's been about 15 minutes, so it's time to check the chicken. Oh, goodness. That is a good looking bird. Now, again, we want the breast meat to register about 160 degrees in the thickest part. Ooh, right there, hovering around 160, 161. Perfect. Now time to let that chicken rest. I'm gonna let it rest on a carving board. That way any of the juices get nice and trapped and transfer it very gently to the carving board. Oh, because that skin is very delicate. We often cover meat with foil as we let it rest after cooking, but I'm not gonna do that with the chicken because I want that skin to stay good and crisp. All right, now these potatoes almost always need a few more minutes in the oven. So just give them a little toss. You can see all that schmaltz in there. I'm gonna put them back in the oven while the chicken rests for about 10 minutes. Oh, schmaltzy potatoes are the best. Now, when I take them out of the skillet, I'm using a slotted spoon to try to keep some of that schmaltz in the pan. And you can see that potato right there, that was one that was face down, and that's why it has that potato chip looking browning on it. Just to finish these potatoes, I'm gonna add a little bit of parsley, about a tablespoon. And as you serve the potatoes, that parsley will get mixed in, add a really nice fresh flavor. Now, time to dive into this chicken. This is a homestyle chicken, no need to get fancy with the carving. I like cutting off the legs. And I'll cut right between the drumstick and the thigh. Give myself a nice thigh here. Mm, yes, please. I'm gonna leave the wings on and I'm just gonna cut through the breast and then cut it into nice big rustic hunks. Everyone gets a piece of white and a piece of dark. Oh, serve a few potatoes. Oh, those potatoes crisp on the outside but has that soft mashed potato texture on the inside. Potatoes first. Potatoes with schmaltz just make me so happy. It tastes like just a home cooked dinner. The best bite is when you get chicken and a potato together and then you squeeze it with lemon. <laughs> I mean, it's just roast chicken and potatoes, but it is so good. One of my all time favorite dinners right here. 
you want to make chicken under a brick with roasted potatoes, be sure to flatten that chicken as well as you can. Use a non-stick skillet and let those potatoes finish cooking while the chicken rests. From America's Test Kitchen at Home, my favorite recipe for chicken under a brick with herb roasted potatoes. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.